Welcome to the Startup Nation conference here in beautiful Miami. Miami and Tel Aviv have a lot in common. The atmosphere, the ocean and Mediterranean, great food and nightlife, beautiful people, communities, and now it is time for Tel Aviv and Miami to do business together. So we are here at the Miami-Dade College for the Startup Nation Conference and we're uh, with Ben Anosh from Audio Burst. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Very good. How is Miami treating you? Uh, terrific. We had terrific weather and the entire, entire community here is embracing us, so it's been fantastic. So what is Audio Burst? So Audio Burst is actually the ultimate search engine for spoken uh, or talkable uh, audio. Or, uh, and uh, we're starting with uh, filling up the fridge, as it's called, uh, with content from the radio. So we're surveillancing 15,000 channels in the U.S. and creating a repository of all the spoken word content through transcribing it and afterwards uh, segmenting it into units we call bursts. How did you come up with the idea? So we've, uh, we've been searching for, for certain co content that was mentioned on radio and we just could not find it. There wasn't a mechanism where we could find the content that was uh, related on radio. And uh, we're thinking, wait a minute, there's a challenge here. We have the technology because we've been working in, uh, in automatic uh, speech recognition for quite a few years. And we adopted that technology for, for that solution. We have the technology. That's from a certain TV show, right? Uh, Do you remember that? Uh, Steve Austin, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. I guess two points. From the, yeah, from the same uh, age group. Yeah, that's right. Tell me, are you a big radio fan? No, specifically, I'm not. Uh, but I'm I'm a lot into digital audio. So uh, I I do listen to audio books. I do listen to podcasts. And uh, it, for me, it's a it's a daily experience uh, listening to digital audio. So what's the next phase? So we've launched in October and we've uh, seen a huge surge in, in their usage. So we've had uh, tens of millions of impressions on our, uh, on our destination site called audioburst.com. And uh, now we're, going, we're launching into the next stage of uh, experimenting with the, the business model itself. And uh, we finalized 2015 with a nice uh, revenue stream. So we're thinking of uh, going to the capital uh, raising uh, stage. Uh, Good luck with that. Us. Thank you. Being an entrepreneur is sometimes like taking a ride on a roller coaster, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What was Tell the me about it. <laughs> what was the lowest point? Uh, first of all, I think that the lowest point has not reached us yet. Okay. Uh, but we will see it. Uh, this is my fifth uh, startup. I can tell you that there, uh, there are periods where you just do not see where that roller coaster is going up. But it always goes up. And stay what's on the ride. And what's the goal? Uh, we want to be the, the world dominant leader in the space of uh, audio consumption. An exit? A big exit? Um, it might come or might not. It's, uh, we're, we're on a path. Uh, ten years from now, I think that you'll see the same team still running uh, this, uh, this uh, service. So. Fifth? Five different startups? Aren't you tired of it? Actually, uh, I really love it. It's li it's living on the edge. It's like uh, it's like the zebra going out to the savanna, and uh, every day she doesn't know if she's gonna come out uh, alive from it. So that's uh, the life in a startup. You you really feel the living on the edge, and it's, it's a good feeling for those who like it, and I like it. Cool, Ben Anosh. Thank you very much. Thank good you. Luck. Thank you, Aviv. And we're a technical team, so uh, presentations aren't our strong suit. So um, what I wanted to show you is uh, a live demo. Uh, we're seeing actually a live transcription of a radio station called uh, Bloomberg Radio. And what you see in the white section here is, uh, is a segmentation according to sound cues, according to an NLP system that we have that we've actually understood that there is a subject that has been uh, changed. And to show you what, what's happening with the content that was just announced on the radio, uh, I'll just take that uh, a short sentence out of it. Take it to the uh, take it to a search engine, which is uh, a behind-the-scenes search engine. And uh, 
what we see is that it was, uh, was aired five seconds ago, and already we have a burst with the keywords being extracted out of it. And uh, it's an audio experience. The Amtrak engineer mentioned. told invest. And the, the next step of it is how do we take it to the end consumer and how he sees it. So I'll take you to a website that doesn't belong to us called Google. And uh, uh, Queen Latifah will do their, her success story. I'll just do a, a general search. And you'll notice that we're popping up on the first uh, pages of uh, Google. It's, so is the case with, uh, with Baidu, uh, Yahoo, and, and, and Bing and so on. And the reason why these search engines love us so much is because we just bring unique content, which is premium content. After all, radio content is somebody that's sat in a studio. He's not explaining what he ate for lunch or what flight he's late to. And if you notice, uh, the, the, the items now have become a web asset into the, uh, into the world of, uh, of, the con of the content itself. And you now we could start building so up different applications what do you for your longevity that the web and uh, monetization uh, uh, mechanism can start get working on. Soon? So this is I'll a web page that is created automatically through, uh, uh, from the radio. Uh, the images are brought from an image bank. So we just uh, bring in, according to the keywords, we bring the images. Um, just like you see on YouTube, uh, the content. So you have the keywords which are extracted automatically and the title which is extracted automatically. And the reason why uh, the search engines find it is because of the text that is attached here. If you try to read the text, you'll notice that it's not very readable. So it's not a read reading experience, but rather an audio experience altogether. And now that you have a repository of, of, the, of all this content, now you can start playing around with it. So five, 10 years from now, there's not, be a, there's not gonna be a word on radio or on any podcast that is not being uh, created on the web and it cannot be, that would not be find, foundable, findable, and so on. Uh, you also notice that the, we built in a mechanism of recommendation of other content that would be related to the experience of uh, the user or of the content itself. And that means that now the people that are mentioned or brands that are mentioned or any other books that are mentioned, items that are mentioned on radio, now their, their owners, are actually understand or get alerts for the fact that they're being mentioned. Which brings me to the business model of how do you promote, how do you build a business out of it? And the business yeah, is promoted through this following. If you notice, once the, uh, the item that is being mentioned on, the, on radio, they, they could boost it, they could share it on Facebook or, face, or on Google or on Twitter, whatever. Um, but they could also promote it or boost it, as we call it on Facebook, and then you just go through a process of uh, defining what type of audience you want, get in the, the package, uh, it's an automatic self-service, put in, I'm, I'm just a member of, so, of our service, so I, I don't need to put on my credit card uh, information, and that's it, and you're up and going uh, with, uh, with a campaign of AdWords and so on. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our business model. Uh, a little bit about statistics of, uh, of how we appeared. So uh, we have a conversion rate about three to 4%, which is about industry standard. Uh, our bounce rate is very low in comparison, about 35%. That means 65% of the, our audience listen to the end of the burst. In general, uh, there are about uh, 2.2 2 uh, bursts being listened by, uh, by our audience for every session that they, they come into their destination site. And that, uh, that's about three, three and a half minutes. Uh, there are about 400 publishers that take our content and continue on uh, posting it. Some of them are uh, items like National Geographic have been using content uh, from our site, uh, HistoryNet, and so on. Uh, about 20 million impressions that we've seen. These are statistics we've launched in October of uh, 2015. So we've seen a, uh, exponential growth on the usage. Uh, interesting enough is the website uh, returning users, which are the red, blue, and the right side corner. And uh, we finalized last year with uh, revenues of uh, $2.1 million. Um, next, this year we're, we're planning on getting uh, about $3.7 million. Uh, numbers that look a little uh, more positive at this point uh, of the year. And uh, we're trying to hit about uh, half a billion uh, during 2000, uh, uh, 2021, 2020, around that uh, sort. Uh, as I said, our background is uh, mainly uh, technical or product uh, oriented. Uh, we've been together as a founding team for the last uh, 12 years. Uh, 
we've had a few exits behind us, so we, we've sold companies for about $300 million uh, in our background, and uh, that's about it. Thank you very much. Have you always dreamed of having your own business? Well, the Idea Center Startup Challenge can help you bring your idea into a reality. Don't miss your opportunity to win $5,000 in seed money to start your business, just like I did with my innovative company, One Town Boards. I became a finalist in the Startup Challenge for my nonprofit, Second Chance, which helped keep kids off the streets and change their lives. The mentoring helped me launch my program into the community. As a runner up in the first ever Startup Challenge, I've now got all the tools I need to move forward with my business, Marketing Connections which provides digital marketing solutions for the small business community in South Florida. Entering the Startup Challenge is easy. Create a one-minute video explaining your idea and why you think it would be a hit. Include your name, the campus you attend at MDC, and your major area of study. Next, go to the startupchallenge.co. Follow the link to complete the entry form and submit your video. It's that easy. We will review your video and start mentoring you right away. Let's make your startup idea a reality. Don't wait. Take, Take the challenge. challenge. Okay, so we're with Moshe, or Moshe Weinstein, okay, from Mobius Medical. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm very good. You're actually local here at Miami. Yes, yeah, so I actually, I grew up here in Miami. When I started high school, my parents moved here to Miami. I went to school in Hillel in North Miami Beach. My yeah. parents actually still leave, live here. I left home 20 years ago after, after high school to return to Israel, but I, I still consider Miami home. Really? Okay. Surfing? Sort of beach, beach. Yeah. beach, I grew up 10 minute walk from, I grew up on Miami Beach, 10 minute walk from the beach. Sounds like a nice uh, <laughs> place to grow up in. Tell me about Mobius Medical, what do you do? So Mobius Medical is developing an injection for osteoarthritis of the knee. And what, what we are is we are a lubricant for your knee that we've proven that with this, that with this solution, we're able to reduce the friction and wear inside of the knee and reduce pain. Now, everybody knows people with knee pain, right? Maybe they're, you know, the statistics show us that more than 12% of the population above the age of 60 has symptomatic knee osteoarthritis, like knee pain. And so we're bringing a solution to this market to help delay their need for surgical options or a total knee replacement. How close are you to uh, product? So I mean, we've already done one clinical study in Israel. So we've done this study in 40 patients where we've shown that, number one, our, our drug, and here in the U.S. this is considered a drug, our drug is safe. And actually showed that it was effective. It was effective in, in reducing pain for, for patients. How are your knees? My knees are good, actually. But I can tell you, I've got a, <laughs> my mother-in-law has already signed up. And people come and tell me, you know, when's, when's the next clinical trial? When are, you, uh, when are you doing this? What was the toughest point? Is, uh, what was the toughest point for you as an entrepreneur? So I'll tell you, I mean, my, my background, actually, I jumped into this uh, about a year ago after spending the last seven years in the in the. The, the corporate world. I worked for Novartis, a large pharma company, and I've always wanted, you know, after I went to business school 10 years ago, and I always wanted to do the entrepreneurial thing, but then, you know, you get sucked into the corporate world, you gotta, you know, make money, get get some good names behind behind you. That's life. But that's life, but I spent seven years building my, my skill set, specifically in commercialization of, in healthcare, I was working in pharmaceutical products, and I returned to Israel a year ago with the point of being able to bring my experience to in a, a young growing startup and I, I met the, the right group that were looking to bring on a commercial commercially minded CEO to the, to the company and I I jumped ship you know some people think I'm crazy you know <laughs> but I, I, I jumped ship and I, I'm loving it every day are you crazy but yes yeah <laughs> so that's uh, that's how you get somewhere in life right you gotta have a vision and you got to uh, you know, work you know work day and night to try to make it happen and, and not be afraid to fail I think uh, why, why do you think Israelis are so uh, successful in the entrepreneurship? Like I think, you know, and I, I sort of, I'm, I'm a hybrid, right? And in a sense, when I talk, I'm probably consider myself more American than Israeli, but I understand the Israeli mentality also. As a child, I lived there. I speak the language fluently. I served in the army, so I did my, 
my bit is to, to be part of, of society. But I think Israelis have have something special in the culture. And one is, you know, they don't really take no for an answer. And they're also, everyone's a little crazy. They think, you know, they come up with the idea and they said, you know, what, I'm going to do whatever I can to, to get this to, to market. And I don't know if this is something that comes out of the, the culture of the army, which, you know, when I remember when I was in the army, you're sort of, it's drilled into your head that you will do whatever you need to do to, to succeed. And I can tell you after the army, when I went back to university to study, I could sit for 12 hours straight and study because it was sort of just drilled in my head that, you know, this is what you need to do to get somewhere. And so I think that's that's one one side of it in the in the mentality that that Israelis will do everything to to succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes they they have, and we I don't do know do everything. Well, we do do everything, right? And you know, sometimes uh, Israel Israelis, in the sense we have sometimes we have no shame, which mm-hmm. is good and bad, right? You yeah. know, someone's strength can also be someone's weakness. We that's have no true. shame to just go up to anybody and they put our, our face in their face and say, look, you want to listen to me because this is what I can do. This is what I'm bringing to the market and, you know, in, in, invest in me, you know, and, and, and at some point, and this is, you know, where, where the Israelis, you know, it gets to a certain point, but then sometimes they do actually have difficulty in later stages of the company being out there and being able to, to raise money and pitch because mm-hmm. sometimes uh, us, we don't necessarily know how to, how to talk to people that don't understand our mentality and, 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 and market our, ourselves that way. Yes. So I think it's a combination. And the dream is a big exit. So for me, my, my dream right now is I'd say even a more realistic dream. I'm not, I'm not here because I want a big exit. I believe that I have something in this technology and this product. My dream right now is to get this into a next clinical study. To, to, we've done it in 20 patients and in, in, in pharmaceutical development. From here, I got to go into 100 to 200 patients and to prove that, you know what, my technology and my, my product has, has virtue and will work to reduce pain. And, you know, is it possible that I go into that study and at the end, you know, we do a controlled study and yeah. it's not positive? Yeah, it's possible. All my signs are pointing towards where it is. But my, my dream is to get this to the next study to be able to bring a solution to the, to the market. Of and course, the exit will come from there. And ease the pain on the public, Moshe Weinstein. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Be creative. Be a hero. Be the solution. Be connected. Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami-Dade College. Well, Moti Eliashiv from New Rocket aims to change the world of aerospace, right? Exactly. How do you plan to do that? We plan to do it by, by developing uh, rocket engines, which are based on uh, clean, green uh, propellants, clean fuel. Uh, rocket engines today, uh, space rocket engines, uh, are using uh, highly toxic materials. It's, they're toxic in the levels that a few drops here in this room would require us to, to evacuate the whole uh, campus. Uh, and by uh, changing these uh, materials with the clean ones, uh, you can change the whole, uh, the whole industry. The, the supply chain is easier, the development phase is easier, so it makes things much, much easier in, in total. Usually when you talk to entrepreneurs, they say, well, it's not rocket science. This is rocket science, right? Exactly. How This tough is, is it? Um, When you look at the end product, it looks uh, very different. But uh, when you get down uh, to the details, uh, rocket engineering is, is a multidisciplinary uh, field. It starts from, from the molecules, from the chemistry, uh, to the material level, to uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering, to uh, systems engineering. Uh, and maybe what makes it uh, difficult from someone that looks from outside is the fact that it's so many things combined in a single uh, product and um, so you know when it's uh, when it's done it looks very very difficult but uh, when you get into the details it's it's engineering everything is designed according to, to a plan and uh, not 
more difficult than uh, you would find in other fields, I believe. And it's not only space, right? You uh, intend to take this product to other fields? Yes, actually our, uh, uh, we are aiming to the aviation market. market. The fact that you have a, a rocket which is uh, based on non-toxic materials uh, means that you can use it in proximity to people. And using a rocket engine in proximity to people leads us to applications for aviation. For example, uh, a few months ago Harrison Ford had an accident flying a, a light uh, aircraft. Uh, the engine failed uh, once he took off and he, he had a, a crash uh, landing. Uh, a rocket engine the size of a, of a small uh, Coca-Cola can, for example, can replace uh, the engine for a minute or so and allow him to land, uh, can allow him to land uh, safely. Uh, we have very innovative uh, uh, ideas for the helicopter world. Uh, imagine a helicopter with a problem in the tail rotor. If you saw uh, Black Hawk Down, the movie, uh, a problem in the tail rotor, if it breaks, the helicopter starts uh, spinning. And that's it. And that's it. In our case, you can put, again, a very small rocket engine with a high thrust, which allows the pilot 20, 30 seconds just to land safely on the green field and not on the, uh, on the uh, electrical poles, for example. So this is another idea. What is your, what is your goal? Uh, the goal, eventually, the, the, the vision is uh, to be a player in the space, uh, in the space launchers uh, industry. This is the vision. On the way there, because it takes a long time and uh, a lot of money, on the way there, uh, we have applications, as we just mentioned, for aviation, uh, smaller space uh, engines and things of this, of this kind. And an exit? I look at on, on the whole adventure of a startup as, uh, you know, as like having a, another kid or a baby. I mean, it needs to grow. Uh, I don't know what the future bears, but uh, if it goes well, then I'll be very, very happy. Whether it's sales or whatever, but if the technology and the idea bear fruit, it will be good enough. What was the, what was the toughest point in the life of this uh, endeavor? Uh, I think uh, the time uh, while waiting for the du during the due diligence, wh while waiting for the for the funding, because uh, you're you're hanging, you don't know uh, what what's going to happen. We, have, we had a good feeling because the feedback was good and everything, but it takes time. The due diligence, especially in a field which is uh, you know there's not an, a lot of know-how in the VC community for it, so it took us a, a long time. And I guess this would be the, the hardest point, waiting for a decision. Okay, so I hope a new rocket will uh, skyrocket. And thank you very sure. much, Monty. Thank you, too. Under his leadership, Univision's main broadcast network became the number one network in America in July of 2013, regardless of language. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Dan and Caesar, thank you. So I don't know if I was the only one sweating when I was listening to that bio. How, how do you think about people like my daughter and viewers, this next generation of viewers that are coming up? We are in a world where the power of, uh, of consuming content has moved from the programmer or the content provider, uh, that power has now moved to the consumer. We've all heard throughout the years, for those of you that follow a little bit of business, is saying that content is king. So just to orient folks, yes. we're talking about Jimmy Fallon, right? We're talking about Seth Meyers and your night lineup. We're talking about you know, your news program, sure. uh, pro programming. We're talking about um, you know, Saturday Night Live and the whole library. W what are a couple other kind of signature pieces of content that... Sure. Um, look, just to, to put it a, a just little... Just to kind of orient folks. No, of course. Look, to put it in context, you know, NBC, to take a step back, NBC Universal, um, Comcast NBC Universal is the largest uh, diversified media company in the world. We have a lot of different businesses. We see a lot of potential growth there. And, um, you know, look for us, uh, particularly at the Telemundo Enterprises uh, piece of our business, Miami, you know, as we all like to say, is, is the capital of Latin America in many places. And so uh, I think it just fills me with tremendous pride when I see 
the growth of Hispanic media and the growth of Spanish language You're media being here so in the States. You're so polite. States. No, it's just, it's, it's. Come it's, on. It's, it's the truth. We're it's at the, a bar. <laughs> we're sharing a beer. That's right. I'm your old Univision buddy. And I'm like, stop hurting it. Stop it, man. Stop taking the playbook. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. I think what I, the super series is a higher production value, sort of more referring to the kind of tastes of a audience that's seeing that's here in the United States. Network television. That's used yeah. to to some of the content they're seeing in English, but they just haven't had a, again a culturally relevant right. um, option in that in, in right. Spanish language. And you know, we're just launched a new show for Telemundo Enterprises on Saturday nights. This was a big deal for us because um, Univision had a show there on Saturday nights called Sábado Gigante for 53 years. The reason that's interesting is because sometimes it is a little bit counterintuitive, but the reason it's true and the reason it's interesting is Hispanics are skewed so young. First, I'd say this is this is the Wild West, so um, there is no roadmap in uh, in this new part of of the business. So, and look, the, the final secret I think to our our uh, to our success over the last uh, few years has been NBC Universal. So, uh, with that, thank you so much, Jorge, again, and, and thank you, Cesar Conde. Thank you for listening. honored to award the Music Discovery Recommendation and Creation Prize to Fusic. We see the potential for innovation in apps like Fusic which brings people into the movie experience. There is this new app and it's called Fusic. Hi everyone, I've just launched a new competition with Fusic. I've just launched a competition with Fusic. just launched a brand new competition with Fusic. Hello, we're the Bamps and we just launched a brand new competition with Fusic. Oh, I wanna see who makes the best video. the right business model, this company could go very far. Thank you. I don't think there are enough female entrepreneurs, but one of the most successful ones is with us now, Liazza de Sternberg from Fusic. Yeah, hi everyone. Hi, what is Fusic? Fusic is the first technology that actually can take people uh, we can uh, allow you to replace an actor in a movie scene or to sing together with your favorite idol. Who can I be? Like Superman? You can be Superman, uh, you can be Batman, uh, you can uh, be the next uh, Beyonce or Rihanna. <laughs> my, my, my dream! <laughs> your dream team! <laughs> of course! And how do you do that? We have a very unique uh, patent algorithm that actually take an original video clip or an, an original video content and mesh it up with the user content. This algorithm know how to deal with the visual, how to deal with the, the audio, and mesh up to 10 different videos in just a matter of second. How successful are you right now? Uh, we already have more than half a million dollars. Uh, we didn't launch the product yet. It was silently launched on the App Store and the Play Store. We are now working very hard in order to make the application featured. Mm -hmm. We have great traction from uh, brands such as uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Turner, uh, traction from music labels, movie uh, studios. So we are on our way to be the next Netflix meets YouTube. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a high bar that it's you It's going to be a unicorn. <laughs> really? <laughs> Definitely. A billion dollar company? Or more. <laughs> How do you plan to do that? Uh, I believe that when you build company, you must understand your user, uh, not just for Fusic, for any company. So one of the most exciting things that we are doing in, uh, in Fusic is building a great BI and analytics tools, understanding more about the needs, and then dealing with it uh, using the different kind of products. Uh, this is the, way, the right way to build a product. How many workers are there, employees in uh, Fusic? Uh, currently we are 13. Wow. And plans for the future? 
Uh, moving here to the state, the marketing team, BizDev, myself, uh, and build a company. <laughs> How tough is it uh, maintaining life, personal life, family life, and being an entrepreneur? Uh, as a mom or as an entrepreneur? Both. Uh, challenging. Uh, challenging, but I think that's with the right partners. Uh, my husband, my amazing kids, my parents, my family. It's doable. And you're planning to be away from the family? No, I'm planning to bring them here. Parents with me. as well? Uh, well, they just uh, went to Pensia. How do you say it? Pension. Pension. Yeah. Yeah. Retired. <laughs> they just retired, so yeah. <laughs> okay. So what's the dream? Okay, building a billion dollar company. Yeah. IPO, exit. Uh, uh, I will probably know it in a year or two. What would be the best for Fusic? Tell me what is or what was the toughest point in the life of uh, Fusic? I think as, an, as a CEO of a company, there is one major point which is always tough is an, to raise the money to the company, to find the right investor, to build the right relationship. Uh, on Fusic we have the dream team of investors in, in Israel. Uh, it is not very easy to get to this point and obviously to continue to the next round. And after Fusic, retirement? Probably not, as this is my second round. Uh, after my first round, I thought that uh, I'm going to be retired and be a homestay mom. And I found myself uh, five months later building Fusic, so probably not, but uh, I will know after the next exit. <laughs> it's a bug. It's a, it's a, it's bug. a disease. It's a, bug. It's a disease. Uh, it's something that uh, it's not going to change. It's there to stay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's speak about uh, launch and about Fusic. Uh, but we so will speak about Fusic. I want to speak about Odish. Odish was founded uh, four years ago by uh, three entrepreneurs. We just uh, sold their uh, ex we sold their company to IBM, company named XAV, for three hundred and million dollars. They came to Odish and they actually develop an amazing video technology in order, in order to create an online auditions for the X Factor, American Idol, and all the reality shows. Two years later, where they actually have a great technology, but not, uh, they didn't have any product. They didn't have any consumer, they didn't have any users, any uh, advertisers, or any production that wanted to work with them. So this is where we started Fusic. I met them, took the same technology, and actually created a new old product after this specific patent technology. So what we are doing on Fusic? We are taking this video technology, we are taking up to 10 different videos, and actually we sync them automatically on the cloud in less than one minute. We know how to sync visual, we know how to sync audio. Now if we are speaking about audio, there are many applications and many video technology that knows how to deal with lip sync videos. There is Dab Smash, if you heard about it. There is Mul Musical.ly, that just has an amazing fundraising of $100 million here in the state. But none of the current solution knows how to deal with audio, how to sync 10 different users into one new audio file. We know how to do it. We have a certi certificate patent for it. And this is based on the same technology of Odish. Another thing that we do, we create mashups. These mashups enable us to bring a new experience to our users. So for example, I can have a duet of myself singing together with Beyonce or on her new video clips. Another possibility is actually to replace an actor in a movie scene. All of, all, uh, the user, what they ha actually have to do is just download an application, either on Android Play Store or on the App Store, pick a content, whatever they like to do, sing or speak or do it in freestyle, and then our algorithm will take their video, the original video, and will create a new video out of it. Fusic is a product for the millennials. The millennials now, not sure, how many of you are, uh, knows the facts? Posting, 50% of them will post a video every day. 
the millennials content is being watched 10 times more than the original content of the content owners. Revenues from user-generated content has overtaken of the official media. More than 90% of the content that is being watched on YouTube and which is relevant to brands such as Apple or Coca-Cola or Lego is being created and produced by the users and not by the original brands. Fusic is the first one that actually bridging between users and original brands content. We already worked and monetized our first campaign with Fanta. Coca-Cola are actually here in Atlanta, are our first advertiser who actually worked with Fusic. Turner are the second uh, customer that's gonna launch new campaigns with the NBA, Shaquille O'Neal, Cox Studio, and new movie theaters just announced us that they're gonna start working us with Fusic next month. In a very organic way, we already reach half a million downloads, and one of the best things about Fusic is our BI and analytic tools. In order to create the best, the best product and be ready to launch our product, we all the time learn about the users. We create new A-B testing. We understand who is our top users, who understand who is the fact, who, what is our K factor, how many new, new users we will get from one user. Once we had it, once we understood the market, once we test it, then we are ready and we're gonna launch our product this summer uh, with Coca-Cola, by the way, here in the state. So just to summarize, if you wanna launch your new product, you have to understand four main goals. Four, the first one, that your user have the traction and they love the product. The second one, that you get uh, the appreciation of brands, and in our case, music labels, which are already working with us. You know how to monetize, and you have the best tools to test it. Startup Nation conference with Meir Zorea from Artsis360. Right. You're not the typical entrepreneur, right? You're not no, a I'm child. The, I'm the youngest one. Of course. Yeah, this is my third startup. I, in between, I manage about six companies and in seven countries. So, um, startup, being an entrepreneur in startups, it's a disease. You don't choose it. So, it's I swear to my wife after the second startup that it's the last one. Yeah. And here we are. So, okay. so not something can... that you control. So maybe afterwards number four, five, six, eight. Well, we'll see. Well, the life expectancy and uh, you know, that, that's probably going to be the last one, but who knows? I mean. What is Artsis uh, 360? We are a spin off of the Technion. Uh, technology was invented by one of the three founders in the Technion. And actually, it, it's built a micro radar, which is a commercial product. Most mm -hmm. of the radars in the world are military. So when there is a military product, nobody asks you how much it costs. At the end it costs, but you have to have iron dome to have a good radar. We are building a radar which is $10,000 uh, price tag. The closest to us is about $100,000. Wow. So because of that, suddenly you open a very large market for things that cannot afford a $100,000 solution, but can afford a $10,000 solution. And it's a radar? that tracks drones, right? Right, so this is luck. Uh, when we started four years ago, the concept was to build a small radar, $10,000 radar for intrusion detection, detecting people approaching a facility, a power station, an airport, a, a prison. But we have something unique. We are doing a 3D 360 radar. So I had to explain why 360. Well, if somebody's coming from there, why you need to look back? Yeah. Or why do you need to look up? 
There's good reason, but what happened two years ago is that we were lucky and the business of drone emerged. And suddenly, 360 is obvious. I mean, you have, we don't know where the drone is coming. And it's flying, so it's coming in 3D, so this is fantastic. Who are your customers? Who needs a radar for drones? Okay. So first of all, what is the, what is the threat of drone? Three threats. One, illegal pictures, paparazzi. Second one is delivering goods that are, in, you know, for example, drugs. And the third one, and it didn't happen yet, but I'm, I hope it's not going to happen, it's a bomb, right? It's a very sophisticated, non-expensive bomb. So who are the people that are threatened? We are negotiating a deal with the security company of George Clooney. He's got six villas. One of them is Laca Maggiore. Yes. So the Laca Maggiore mayor said that anybody that is approaching the villa for 100 meters will pay a 100 euro fine. So you take a drone and you don't... So you need to detect drones that are going to take a paparazzi. Uh, you need to, there are in Israel at least more than 12 events of drone, uh, of drone trying to smuggle drugs. They're taking a, born, a tennis ball, cut where in to? half. Smuggle it where to? To the prison. Ah, to prisons. Yeah, they take a tennis ball, cut it in half, put drugs, close it. And then the drone is flying above the prison and drops the ball and you have drugs in the plane. It can be a drug, can be a, a cellular chip, can be a gun. And so this is, this is happening. Um, drone hit uh, uh, British Airways aircraft with, uh, recently. There are hundreds of events that are not published that are defined as near collision. So the problem with drone is just emerging, it's embryonic, but because drones are going to revolutionize our, our life, we're going to see drones delivery. Amazon, 150 companies are planning, and it's going to happen. So there will be a lot of drones in the street. You need to manage it and to protect yourself from drones. Where do you see your company in two, three years? Um, we think we're going to be in two years uh, cash flow positive. Uh, we'll be probably a hundred million dollar uh, sales in about four years. And uh, in terms of where I'm going to be, I mean, it's, you know, we are planning and, la and God is laughing. So it's very difficult to plan, but we're going to grow and we are now bombarded by demand because of the price tag. For example, let's take a prison. If a prison wants to protect yourself uh, and he approaches the people that are selling standard radars, they're talking about half a million to a million dollars. No prison can afford that. We are negotiating deals with hundreds of prisons, deals like $50,000. So there are five pilots that are waiting for our product with the price tag of $50,000. So this is, this is gonna emerge and we are not sure what is the size of the market, but it's, it's growing now 25% annually, so it's going to be very lucrative. What is um, the best lesson you've learned along the years of entrepreneurship? Well, the best lesson. It's, first of all, you have to be very persistent. You have to choose carefully your partners. There is, 95% of the successful startup didn't, were not successful with the first plan. So, in order to, you know, be successful, you have to have partners that are working with you, that can criticize you, that can assist you. So partnership and share the, share the risk and share the burden. It's, it's like very, marriage. It's, it's more. more. It's very, very difficult because it's really, really difficult. That's one. The second, well, it's the same level of the problem is choosing the investors. As a startup, you're under pressure to raise money. So when somebody is coming and, and you know, show you the money, uh, if you're not experienced, you, you're taking the money. The problem is you have to think when you are taking somebody's money, what will happen if? If it's going to be disastrous, there is no problem. You know, this is it, risk. If it's very successful, most of the time there is no problem. The problem is in the process. So who is this guy that you're getting money from? What will happen to is from now that when the illusion or the you know, pink environment will, will vanish and become reality, is it going to be assisting you? or bothering you, or killing you, or destroying your mentality, or whatever. So, choosing the people around you is critical. And luck, also. Luck. luck. Yeah. Okay, so good luck. Thank Mayor you. Zoya. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Be creative. Be a hero be the solution, be connected, 
Be innovative. Be global. Be successful. Be you. Be MDC. Be Miami Dade College. Nadav Naaman is the co founder and CEO of Ducati, right? That's true. Did I pronounce it right? Well, it depends. Some people pronounce it actually as Dokadi. Dokadi. Uh, but we'll go with the Dokadi and uh, no problem. as long as people pronounce it, uh, use it, and that's, that's the main point. Who needs to use it? Uh, we believe all of us. We all have the need to use Dokadi. We all have a need to bring more order to our personal life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, have, we all have the things that we must take care of in our life, if it's our financial stuff, our, our personal identity. Um, medical house car there's so many things that we need to take care of and it's it's been it's becoming a big challenge to all of us um, so Dokadi wants to solve that Dokadi wants your to make your life easier to uh, make sure that you're on top of all of your things um, and from Dokadi's per- perspective it means a lot of different things that we we try to provide to our users so it's an app essentially for you as a user yes it is an app that you use it's a mobile app that's currently available for both on iOS and on Android. Um, and the main interface for you as a user today is, is, is through an app. Obviously behind it, there is a lot of deep technology that's, um, that's the entire purpose of it. And the, 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 the things that we are optimizing for is how do we do things more on your behalf automatically and serve you in a way that provides constant value to you as an end user. So what does it give me? So to, begin, to begin with, again, we believe that you need to take better control over your life, your personal life. Mm-hmm. Um, today we have all our information scattered all over the place. If it's in binders in the house or uh, on our emails, cloud services, or, or in, our, in our wallet or other places. Um, and the reality is that today we are dependent on ourselves to understand when things require our attention, When things are, are expiring, when things we need to update, uh, when we actually need access to a few of these things. So Dokadi, Dokadi is a place for you to store and manage your personal stuff. And what we aspire to do is actually also do things on your behalf. So um, today the, the service helps you collect a lot of this information and documents from the different cloud services and also you can use a very sophisticated advanced scanner that we have built. internally into the app um, and Dokadi analyzes and understands the data in a way that can provide value for you to begin with tell you when things require your attention like I mentioned when things require um, you to renew them and we are hoping and we're going in the direction of actually doing things on your behalf so what we call to renew it so for instance today already in most of the US we renew car registration automatically for you and how do you make money? Is it uh, it's not app? about money we're yeah, here for the, be- for, for the bread for the better, better, good. better good of the world right That's true um, we believe that by creating value to our consumers by automating a lot automating a lot of their um, needs um, it creates a lot of value for the users that they're they'll be willing and, and we see it that they're really willing to pay us um, currently we have a subscription model that if you can use dokadi on your own take control of your life and organize it the way you want it. Um, that's a free version but if you want dokadi to actually do the automation find things automatically for you understand your needs and act on that mm-hmm. then you would pay a, a pro subscription model um, and that's ultimately how we make our money there aren't a lot of uh, Israeli b2c companies right yes um, that that was a challenge right yes it, it wasn't still is a challenge um, traditionally you know Israelis are really good in technology and Um, they're really good in, in, in uh, both hardware and software. Um, and um, traditionally, Israelis built companies, really great companies around technologies that served other companies, the B2B stuff. Um, it was always considered a, a bit of a risk for Israelis to um, go into the world of B2C to, the, to direct to consumers. Um, however, in the past few years we have seen some, some good companies and great outcomes that came out of Israel uh, from in the consumer area ways uh, ways for instance 
Um, some consider also Wix as, as, a, as a consumer product. And there's many others, by the way, um, Viber. And there are many other companies that actually have been successful in, in the B2C uh, landscape. Um, I think that uh, from our perspective, one of the key components is that I come with a wide uh, background and experience in the world of B2C, mm -hmm. uh, working actually in the US for many years uh, at PayPal and later on working and serving also at LifePerson who also has a consumer angle to it. So I, I understand consumer, I, I appreciate that. I, that's where I see um, the challenge that I like to, cha to tackle. I like to create value to all of us and go directly to that. So. Um, that's what the, 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 the ambitious uh, direction that we took on ourselves. What's the toughest thing for you as an entrepreneur? Um, it's very difficult to, to call out one specific thing. Uh, you know, as an as a entrepreneur and a startup, you're daily faced with different challenges. Um, I can tell you that from experience, um, and I've worked for many years for corporates, and mm -hmm. doing it for your own small startup and doing it um, your way to some extent, um, even with the biggest challenges, it's always rewarding. That's true. Um, even if you fail or even obviously, hopefully when you succeed. Um, challenges vary from fundraising, um, by you have a vision, you have a mission, you understand it, it's very clear, getting the rest of the world on board on it. Um, you know, from our perspective, we build a very strong product, a very great, g good, great product that people love and use us on a, on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, getting and spreading that word out, that's, that's the biggest challenge that we're currently still facing with. I saw a comic um, drawing, Life of an Entrepreneur. They took a calendar and all of the days in the month were Oh no, oh no, oh no, <laughs> hell yeah! Oh no, oh no, 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 hell yeah! Is it true? It is totally true. Um, you know, it, it, they call it a roller coaster, they call it there so many different uh, things, but the, the reality it is, there's, it's mainly the extremes, it's ups and downs. It's one day you're really on, on high because you came out with great meetings with investors and with uh, potential partners and things are on a roll and then mm -hmm. the second day, uh, you hit a block and, and, and you need to figure out how to either go through it or go around it and and it's definitely ups and downs constantly. Uh, what will be a success for uh, Dokadi? Um, we believe, you know, we, we, we started Dokadi with a, with a true and sometimes um, some would call it stupid romantic vision. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we honestly believe that uh, there's an opportunity to be a meaningful um, tool and a meaningful service in the world. Uh, from our perspective, reaching as many people as possible and having them getting value from Dokadi, that's, that's for us, a, a, that will be a huge success. You know, every user that uses Dokadi today and, and the feedback that we get from it, it really excites us. Obviously, we are a business. We, 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 we build ourselves to grow. We, we look to scale. We want to be a valid and a, a, a solid and a stable business for our for ourselves and for our maybe, investors and maybe for everybody. Maybe a nice exit will also. Uh, maybe a nice exit down the road, but uh, you know, we honestly believe not, to, we, we, we took the approach of not thinking it through that on a daily basis. First of all, you can't really operate thinking of, uh, uh, of an exit while you're still working on it. Okay, Nadav Naman, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for Miami for having us. It was really a great uh, visit. That's true. So that's it here at Startup Nation Conference at the MDC. See you next year.